I have arrived, not just at the spectacular Dean Park here, but with my overnight bag, because lucky me, I get to spend the night. Dean Park is one of England's most fantastic historic houses. It has roots from the medieval period, and then it evolved over the Tudor and Georgian periods as well to what we see today. It's been in the Brudenell family since 1514, but it really did evolve over these six centuries. I'm here to meet and of course to stay with Charlotte and Robert Brudenell, who are the custodians of wonderful Dean Park. And I can't wait to share all the history with you and what's going on here on the estate. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband, Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Living in a place like this is a joy, but also a challenge. And every day we're aware that we're preserving a very special part of Britain's heritage. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles and manors, and stately homes as much as I do, please join this American Viscountess as I journey into the British countryside in search of some of Britain's finest historic houses. Well, I'm hoping this is the right entrance because the doors are open, so I must be in the right place. But look at this fantastic courtyard. I definitely have a lot of questions, but I am spotting actually a lot of heraldry, so a lot of coat of arms. Hello. Welcome. I love the welcome, knocker. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> oh, lovely Ooh, to see you. So lovely to see you. Mwah. Hello, Robert. How are you? Hi, um, Lovely to see you. Hi. Now, I have some questions about the courtyard. Can we start there first? Let's go and have a look. Okay, this has history, doesn't it? Indeed, first mentioned in the Doomsday Book, 1086, so going back a very long way. Right. And then it belonged to the Sea of Westminster and it gradually got added and built to. So this section over here was added in about 1630s. Also, when I was walking in, I noticed heraldry, coat of arms. I, and I did, there's coronets, there's, you've got a, We've got the Earl's coronets up there. Yes. For in the, in the hoppers, the top of it, because we had seven Earls of Cardigan who lived here. Okay. The Bru Thomas Brudenell was made the first Earl of Cardigan in 1660. Right. And he built this tower up there, so we've got more heraldry up there. Yes, you do. And with the flag behind it, in your honour. Oh, my goodness. Okay, where, where are we walking into right now? We're walking into the Great Hall, which we've just had redecorated two years <gasps> ago. And it's got a fantastic ceiling, oh. which um, is made out of sweet chestnut. And we were always told that the little weevils wouldn't eat into it, but unfortunately they have. Oh. So we've just had it restored and we've repainted the Great Hall in what would have been actually the original color. Beautiful. It's one of the last Great Halls that were built before they went out of fashion. We know it was built in 1571 because it says so on the mantelpiece right. over there. And oh. it, was, um, it was rebuilt because Queen Elizabeth came to stay here for the night. And Edmund Brudenell thought actually if she came back for more than one night in the future, perhaps she better have a bigger great hall. So he built this great hall, but sadly she never came back. By 1600, these great halls were out of fashion and yes. quite a lot of the houses split them into two levels. I'm just gonna throw this out there because as you mentioned, the mantle, I did spot some Montague lozenges. There certainly is a Montague connection here. Okay, should we save that for later? We will. <laughs> Charlotte and Robert open a selection of rooms to the public on certain days in the year, but we will venture behind the scenes to glimpse how Dean Park is still very much a cherished family home. Now turn left, come through here. Okay, oh my goodness. I think I need to stay for a whole week, Charlotte. We've got a lot of books for you to read. <laughs> <laughs> and we're putting you in the bow room. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my gosh. This is splendid. Okay, first of all, I love the colors. Um, it's enormous. Did you do this? You said exactly the right <laughs> things. This is the one bedroom in the house that I have recently done up. And uh, it was a germaline pink faded wallpaper and raspberry carpets which were shredded. Uh, and it's quite a, it's quite a, a difficult oh. thing to know. You've got to dec decorate a room for the next 60 years. The other thing I did was I took all the books out of the bookcase and, and, and put my collection of Coalport China in there, Lovely. which is rather pretty. So you did this all yourself? Yeah. Well, I suppose I did, darling, didn't I? Yes. yes. I didn't and what do you it. think of it, Robert? <laughs> I didn't have a say in it, I'm sure. <laughs> I just we signed, had, um, signed, signed, signed it off. But then you've also got, up the stairs, this is very important, a bathroom which has got the best no. view in the world. No, you're right. This is the best view in the world. The bridge I just walked over, and then look at these magnificent gardens down below. Thank you, thank you, thank you, both of you. This is, it is really a treat, so thank well, you. Shall we leave you to sort yourself out here and then come downstairs and have a drink? I did not expect this. When Charlotte and Robert asked me to stay, I of course said yes, but oh my goodness, this is, I mean, she's done just a brilliant job here. And this is what's so wonderful about these historic houses is the way that each homeowner, as they, you know, take over, if you like, um, for their, their period of time, they put their mark on it or they redecorate or they add something. And this is exactly what Charlotte's done in this bedroom. You know, she's put in such lovely, bright, happy colors here, but then kept the horsehair uh, mattress. So I think that's what we're always trying to do as homeowners is we're trying to make sure that, of course, we put our touches um, on it, and but at the same time preserving the past. The connection between the Brudenal and the Montague families reaches back to the 18th century, when George Brudenal, the fourth Earl of Cardigan, married Lady Mary Montague. What I love best of all is the map in the corner that shows that um, my husband and my son are all descended from, from God. Right, And right. as I point out, as we all are. We all are. You'll probably find a lozenge or three. I know, I, maybe. Yep, I already spotted it, right there. So when was this created? Well, it's, I Beautiful. think the bottom one is the third Earl of Cardigan, so it must have been early 1700s. So it would have been early 1700s. Yes. Incredible, well you can see down through here, and this is what I love, you can see the three lozenges up there. Montagues, and here is Sydney Montague, and guess what, Charlotte? Right below, Earl of Sandwich. Yay! Yay! <laughs> right there, there you go. And so he's got his um, garter there, and Jemima, the first countess, and off they go, Edward Montague, the Earl of Sandwich. Gosh, you've got a lot here. Look at this, Edward Montague, Lord Hinchingbrook. Goodness me, I mean, Wow, we've really, again, another Earl of Sandwich. That would have been the third one. So, no, that would have been the fourth. So that would have been the, the one who invented the sandwich. Anyway, not taking it away from Charlotte here. <laughs> but we're <What> is, related, <laughs> is, 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 is what it is. We we're related. Kiss and kin. Anyway, all I, I'm happy about is that we're related. <laughs> And look at who's here to greet us. Hello. Minta. Minta. Now, I briefly walked through here on my way up to my gorgeous bedroom. As I walked in, of course me and my Minnesota. eagle eye, I spotted those Montague lozenges. There's center there, right there. And I'm, I'm learning a lot about the heraldry. So, you know, because we have to remember that during that period, if you were a grand aristocratic or noble person, you have to marry somebody from a grand aristocratic family. So when you did, your coat of arms would be impaled with the, the, wife, um, the wife's family coat of arms. Is that correct? Absolutely. So you, you'll find in the middle there that they've got so many quarterings. It's grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents. Right. It was very, a very important part of the, um, 
16th century. Yes. And, and we've, got, we've got them also on the, on, on the stained glass windows we've got here. And the interesting story about this was that oh on I, I, early December in, in, in uh, 1943, we had an American air base of three and a half thousand <gasps> Americans just up, up on the hill there. And they were flying B-17 Fortress bombers. And one of them early in the morning had ice on the wings and it tipped over and was about to explode and they managed to get into the local village and say get up get up out 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 right boom up it went no and it broke all the stained <gasps> glass here and robert's grandparents stored glass on top of each other which you don't do because the weight cracks it even more and then it, after the war um during the 1950s my parents and all got a grant to restore it and with the grant came you have to open to the public and that's why we're open to the public oh my goodness yeah just like Bewley and so many English historic houses, Dean Park opened its doors to the public for the first time in the 1950s. And the Great Hall is still a highlight of the tours today. And this is the original panelling here. That is the panelling, the original panelling from when it was built in 1571. Now, I see we've got some polishing going on over here. Julie's very kindly helping us. Yeah. And I think you, you might join her, might Yeah, you? I would love to. So what are you it's using big, to, using to polish it? A, a wax. Just a wax. Yeah, just a wax, yeah. And right. Put it on very, very lightly. It always go with the grain. Always so go with the, the grain. grain. Yeah, yeah. And little, you know, like, and you can feel it almost go, you know, it's, it suddenly goes smooth. Yeah. Do you try that bit? Okay. And, um... With the grain. Yeah, you just go up and oh, down. Yeah. And just And then just keep going. And oh, then you can yeah. feel it suddenly go smooth. You can. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, it's wonderful to be polishing something that's, you know, Tudor period. Yeah, absolutely, isn't it's, it? You just, yeah, you, it yeah, is, yeah, it you, is. What, you think you, about the people that made the, it, and yeah. the people that polished it yeah, before. I know the people and, that yeah, polished yeah, it before, and you yeah, think yeah. how many other yeah. hands were on this. Exactly. It's wonderful. So, do you want me to do all of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a week. Thank you, what a really, really special place. And also knowing that this is one of the last great halls that was built gives it even more, you know, meaning to it. You, you, when you walk in here, you just think how wonderful. Thank you, we love it, oh, yeah. we use it, we love it. Discover the past with exclusive history documentaries and ad-free podcasts presented by world-renowned historians, all from History Hit. Watch them on your smart TV or on the go with your mobile device. Download the app now to explore everything from the wonders of ancient Pompeii and the mystery of the princes in the tower to the life of Anne Boleyn and D-Day. Sign up via the link in the description. So this is the moment I know I've been waiting for and hopefully you have as well. And that's really the history of Dean Park. It's been here for a millennium really. And, but it's been again, a part of the Bruno family since 1514, is that right? Indeed. This is the start of the tour. This is the billiard room. Um, originally in the medieval days it would have been a parlour to the Great Hall but I'm going to go back right to the very very beginning and that is that it's first mentioned in the Doomsday Book in 1086 and uh, so we know that it was here yes, in 1086. Yes. It was a monastic retreat, the um, See of Westminster, the Bishop of Westminster owned a lot of land around here and he would come up and stay here to survey his land. Yes. So it was a small monastic cell, a little square courtyard house. Ah. And it remained as such until the church realized that actually perhaps they could rent it out to families who would uh, let them, him come and stay twice a year and, and live Right, there. right. So in 1514, Sir Robert Brudenor took over the lease because it was a lease then. It, this is the first room that our visitors come to, so we try to give them a little brief about it. Right. It's terribly important because it is the one part of the house where we have just one item of medieval. And that is in the far corner. There's yeah, a little should we go arch. visit it? There was, there was an archway that went into a Catholic chapel. And okay. then the other important thing in this room is we've got, we've got the charter, which is right there, that creates Thomas Brudenall, the first Earl of Cardigan. During the Civil War, mm. King Charles I was trying to raise money. Yes. And Charles I um, asked him, and the son said, here's a thousand pounds for your fighting fund. When things come good, could you honor my father and his heirs? <laughs> he was very canny. In 1660, when Charles II came to the throne, he said, could you hurry up and honour the debt to my father because he's, he's 81. Right, so right, right. So we need right. that quite quickly. Yeah, we need that title. So three weeks before his coronation, he was created the first Earl of Cardigan. As we explore the wealth of rooms here at Dean Park, there are a few surprises along the way. Oh my goodness. This is actually a very modern chapel. 
it was only done in the 1980s because the parish church had, it's a huge church, and it had five members of the congregation all called Brudnell. Right. And they froze to death in there. So my oh. mother-in-law thought, well, why don't we um, make a, our own little chapel? <gasps> and this was the billiard room. And we've just seen the billiard table, which moved yep. into the smoking room because nobody smokes. Yep. Um, and so she turned it into this beautiful chapel. It's wonderful. And do you use the chapel? We do. You we do? We was christened here. We're having a service next on Sunday week. Um, and we have a lovely little tradition here, which you can bring in when you live in a house like this. Yes. Which is that um, having gone to the, um, the Royal Chelsea, or the hospital in Chelsea, every service they have there, whether it's a funeral or a wedding or whatever, they sing the national anthem. We sing the national anthem here at the end of every service. No. Charlotte, this is incredible. Nice. This is the tapestry room. Oh my goodness. And once upon a time, it had tapestries all the way around it. Okay, what about this ceiling here? The ceiling is dated 1597. Oh. And we do have some rooms above it, which we hardly ever go into because we don't want to yeah. bang and make too much noise on, on yeah. it. This, oh my goodness. I mean, can I just ask then, because would this be considered a pendant ceiling? Yes. Because, yeah. You can see the... the, the yeah. Um, because we have one at Mapperton in the Great Chamber, again, Tudor, probably 1550. Um, but this beaut but this is extraordinary. I mean, unbelievable. Oh my goodness. It's, it's such this a lovely room. Spectacular. And so when you arrived, Dean, had this been sort of done to what we're seeing today by your mother-in-law? She had, and actually it was, it was um, well, after I'd married Robert, it was beige, this room, and my mm. mother-in-law painted it this extraordinarily tealy, greeny, blue colour, which I think is magnificent. Mm, I it sets too. off her collection of Christian art. Yep. We've got a whole lot of Christian art. And you know what the great joy with these pictures in here is? Uh, I use them for doing Christmas cards. Do you? Mm -hmm. This one in particular, yes. I think this piece of furniture is the very oldest piece of furniture. I think it dates from the early 1500s. Wow, incredible. Obviously it was used in a kitchen because it's got lots of chopping marks on yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think we're rather bored of listening to us? Mint is ready to go into the next room. This is King Henry's room. This is the room that King Henry VII would have stayed in on the way up to visit his mother, Margaret Beaufort. Right. Who lived about eight miles north. Okay. And she was the reason that Sir Robert Brudenall took on the lease here because he was her finance advisor and her executor. King Henry the Seventh. King Henry the Seventh. His mother. Mother. His mother. We've got a picture of her here, Margaret Beaufort. Queen Elizabeth would have slept in this room when she came for her one night. No. Uh, I would love to tell you no. that she slept in that bed, but she came in 1565, and if I'm a purist, that bed is dated 1580. Uh, so it was not okay. that bed. But she would have slept in this room, which would have been appropriate because this is where her grandfather would have slept. Right. And w this panelling that I'm seeing here? Rather it... original, unique, single linen fold panelling. Yes. Yeah. And, and so when Queen Elizabeth was here it would have and been slept here. in this room, this would have been this here. This would have been here. Coat of arms. Absolutely. Would have absolutely been here. And then so... there was panelling at this window. And then uh, as we are blessed in this house to have these little corner turrets, we have a bathroom no. using the panelling. No. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. But of course, this wouldn't have been a bathroom when Queen Elizabeth was here. No, it would, would have been, have been a powder room. But a powder room, yes. right, powder yeah. room. Beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm in the turret right now. Yes. Oh, I love being in turrets. There's one room which sums up perfectly how historic houses, like Dean Park and Mapperton, are layered in history as each generation leaves their mark. But what does this date back to? I'm all about dates. Oh, we're, we're going back to about the, the 15, late 1500s, Jacobean time. So this is original? Yes. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. This is original. Wow. 18th century, we've got a bit of Georgian panelling. Right, and okay. And yeah. 19th century windows, 20th century no. ceiling, because this ceiling is a work of art on its own and was done by Robert's parents in 1997. We've yeah. even got 21st century. What's My husband and I went to Jerusalem about four years ago. Right. And we bought this mm. in the market. So this is a real wonderful hodgepodge of centuries. Yes, it is. Yeah, I love it. What I love best of all in the room are the two pictures hanging on the Georgian panelling. Dean Park is full of portraits of Brudenalls. He was the steward 
and he was born in the village, educated oh. by the third Earl, came back and was the steward at Dean, running, running it all. And these pictures were given by the third Earl as a wedding present. Oh. And note the blue silk, of the, she's much prettier. Yes. And it passed down the Eaton family line and came up for sale. So I said that it was incredibly important that we had hanging on the walls people who lived here. Yes, who yes. Who are not called Brudenall. Right. So he's come back and hooray, hooray. Come on in, this is, this is my study, the Oak mm. Parlour. It's lovely. Thanks. We've got a portrait of King Charles II there, who was the one who created Thomas Lord Brudenell, the first Earl of Cardigan. Right. Three weeks before his coronation. Three weeks, because it was a debt that was owed by King Charles I, his father who was <laughs> Yep. And then he said to him, is he, that right? He, he honoured he he honored honored. The, honored the deal from the, the money that was given for his fighting fund. Right. Uh, and so he was made the first Earl of Cardigan. And his, one of his mistresses was the Duchess of Port, Portsmouth, Louise de Carouai. And they had, um, their son became the Duke of Richmond. Oh. And the reason we have him here is because he married um, the first Earl of Cardigan's granddaughter, who was called Lady Anne Brudenall. And we've got a picture of her here. Right. Well, at least the... Um, their illegitimate child became a duke. They were so, all made dukes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fitz, Fitzroy, that's where the name Fitzroy comes from. Okay. Yes, because Roy is king and Fitz means um, illegitimate son. I didn't know that. Mm. No. That's a fun fact. I could win that at a quiz night, couldn't I? <laughs> you could. I could win that as a quiz night. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. Now, what I'd love to show you is the work of art that I would take with me. If there was a fire, I would yep. grab the dog first, right, yes, then the husband, course. and then I'd come back and I'd get this map, which is from 1746, done by Brazier, and it's a map layout of what Dean looked like then. And I cannot tell you as a work of reference how much we have managed to understand from it. There was a river, yep. they added a canal, they merged them together, mm. and then they um, built this huge oh, bridge here and they made an enormous lake here because those were the fish ponds from, from, from the oh, um, right. medieval days. This is wonderful. So this is what you would take? I would take this, yeah. absolutely. It's fantastic. Look at Minta. Minta. Hello. Good. Yes. Come on, Minta. Come on. Let's go. Minta must get a lot of steps in Good. this house. <laughs> she needs it. Have you seen how stout she is? <laughs> I mean, stunning. The ante hall. Beautiful. It is well, beautiful. The hall. ante hall. And it's because it's off the Great Hall. It's off the Great Hall. Right. So I think probably in, in medieval days it would have been a buttery and a dairy and a storage oh, right. room. Right. Yes, but now it's been made into our little little dining room. Yeah, well, it's, it's rather grand. I love it. Great. But we've got two lovely items in here. Right. Which I really want to show you. One is the exercise chair in the corner. Okay. Do you know what an exercise Would you like no, to? No, is it, is it 18th century? I think, no, it might be 19th century. Basically, okay. without biffing your head, sit on it. Okay. So I can stand on this. Stand on that, yep. Okay. Sit on it. Mm -hmm. And you go up and down. Up. Hey, this is what they did, what, to That's work what their core? Yep. Okay. Yeah. We used to say to our son, push down lunch, make room for pudding. <laughs> oh my gosh, what, do they think that they just didn't get enough steps around these big houses? <laughs> well, you're not doing any steps now, but no, it is. No. It's so just working something else, it's working <laughs> yes. in the core. Yeah. It's an, that is, so crazy. And the second thing I wanted to show you, this was a, a gift to me and I have put around it all the most famous people who have been to Dean either for tea or for lunch mm. or stayed or for dinner. And we've got um, obviously Queen Elizabeth I because she stayed here for her one night. Uh, we have Prince Philip because he came here for the um, 1954 anniversary of the Charge of the Light Brigade dinner. And we've got Prince Michael of Kent. Um, I put Earl of Cardigan, but that's rather generic, isn't it? Because there were seven of them. Yeah, but still. Um, we yeah. also had a visit from Her Majesty Queen Mary. Queen Mary came for oh. tea here in 1937. Did she take anything? No, she didn't. She did 
point out that uh, she had something that we had and my husband's Greek grandmother said, oh, we quite like it back. <laughs> um, but that's apocryphal. Right, um, right, what she right. did do is she went round, went round the house and um, she sort of saw all the shredded walls and said, um, amazing family that's been here for so many years, such a shame there's no money. <laughs> I thought, plus la change. Yes. <laughs> this is brilliant. This, I love this though, this sort of en plasma that is, it's very clever. For dinner parties. Yeah, for it's dinner great. parties. How spectacular Dean Park is. I met up with Charlotte and Robert for drinks in another beautiful room. Can you just tell me a little bit about this glorious room? And the shape, I think, is rather splendid because you've got sort of it, the square edges there, and then it has the... The bow, the, which yeah, is why it's called the bow room. Right. So in this room, we have probably one of our prized possessions, which is the Brudenall Tresham Library. And it is a very important late 16th century library where we have books that are written in Spanish, French, Latin, Greek, English... It's a collection that belonged to Sir Thomas Tresham. Right. And Sir Thomas Tresham's youngest daughter married Sir Thomas Brudenell, who was also an antiquarian, so a lot of the books were his. And Fantastic. I reckon that it was her wedding diary. This wonderful library was confiscated by the parliamentary troops in 1643 when they came to raid Dean. And the Earl of, um, Earl of Cardigan, who was then Sir Thomas, Lord Brudenell, mm. he escaped. And they took his library away, and he had quite an adventure, which I won't go into. But when he was let out of the Tower of London, he had to buy his library back. No. And the library uh, was uh, brought back, except for some of the books, which are now in an Oxford library. And right, but he was back. able to get the majority of yeah. Or he's the furious collection. he had to pay them, oh, so goodness. I think it was more of a fine than a, than a repurchase. This is 16th century, most of these yes. books. And beginning of 17th century. The beginning. Yeah. In this library here, are, do you have a few favourites, would you say? I have one very special book here. Right. <clears throat> one very special book here, and I know where it is, because it's all under lock and key. Yes, yes. And this is the Almanac, the diary of Sir Edmund Brudenell. On August the 12th, in 1565, it has got Regina Apud Dean. So we have the absolute proof that Queen Elizabeth I came here for the night uh, of August the 12th and August the 13th. Oh my goodness. So when people That's say, oh, incredible. she never came to Northampton, she yeah, did. She did. She did. And, and she, she stayed here. For one night. For one night. You have this but proof. Absolutely. We have right. this proof. You see, yes. that's what's pretty spectacular, that you have this in writing. So cheers to that. Absolutely. <laughs> cheers Indeed. to Queen Elizabeth I. Absolutely. And her one night stay. She yes. never came back, thank <laughs> heavens. <laughs> Today, I'm ready to get stuck in on a lot of the future projects that are happening here at Dean Park. I mean, Dean Park is vast. It's a beautiful historic house, but of course, we're always, as homeowners, trying to think of ways that we can incorporate more income to help to preserve this part of England's heritage. Good morning. This is, this is heaven. It's all heaven, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Good morning. Can I just say, I slept. I was going to ask you. But do you think it's the horsehair mattress? I'm just going to shut that it's also, door. It's also because you're, you're, you're here, you're staying under somebody else's roof, so your um, worries also go yes. slightly. It's That's, very, very tranquil here. Yeah. Yes. You do hear the traffic, but, you know... It's the bustle of life outside. <laughs> yes, it was beautiful, but I... Yeah, I slept like a log. Oh, well done. Do you do coffee, Charlotte? Absolutely, I don't speak until I've had a cup of coffee. I know. Sitting in here, the stained glass, is extraordinary. Was this always here? Not at all. No, we're looking at the remnants of a ballroom that was built after the charge of the Light Brigade to commemorate the great victory, or not victory. And there is um, a sort of gap. There was a, the, a Regency Enfilade that came through, right. and the ballroom went right outside and was designed by Crace. It was very high Victorian. Right. I think the colour of the stone was, was slightly was yellower. Well. You, was you remember it. I remember it, yes, certainly. But if the stone color of the stone was slightly different to the rest of the house. So you it was, remember it was here? It was here, it was taken down in the, in the 80s. I remember we, we had a school here in the late 60s, early 70s, and we used to play badminton in here. And uh, later, of course, when my parents opened the house to the public, we had, uh, we had teas in there and we had our 21st party in, in the ballroom. And so this was, so this doorway here that I'm looking that at? That door, I mean, for parties, 
there were three big rooms, the bow room where we were the night, uh, last night. Then you open up the twin doors behind in, in, the, in the bow room into the drawing room, and then these doors open, and then you came into the boardroom, and this was a double height room in here. It was the, there was a minstrel's gallery upstairs, ah. up some steps, and then downstairs was like it is now. And then you walked through, uh, when, you right. came, when you came, went straight into the board. I, can't, I don't think there were double doors here like there are now. Right. But uh, then you had the ballroom right to the far end, and the turret at the end was doubled height than it is now. My parents put it down. The floor was, level it, was the same, and they had underground heating. They had um, underground So hot this water. floor here went, went straight out. Went straight, straight out. out. Yeah. One of the things, of course, I love to do when I come and visit magical places like Dean Park is just to be able to get on, onto the estate. Because I think, especially for me, the American, when I first moved here and I would see these grand houses, these palaces, these manor homes, I just thought that was it. You've got the, the house and the history of the house, but then you've got the surrounding land and, and there's a lot going on. We need the land all around it because that is what supports the house. Every tile on the roof needs, needs some funding right. somehow. Right. Um, and uh, we are very blessed here because we've got a whole lot of, of um, different ways of uh, d uh, diversification, I think is the word. Generating income, yeah. Generating yes. income, yeah. So today you're going to hopefully go and have a look at some of the things we've got, some of the building works that we're doing, which we will be able to um, have commercial lets with, and, um, and then see what we're doing with the ground, with re regeneration in, in terms yep. of rewilding and the bees. We're very fond of our bees. And, and some of Robert's cattle. When you took over, you know, nine years ago, did you feel when you stepped in there was still a lot for you to do? I mean, what was your biggest concern nine years ago? Um, my personal one was being absolutely scared rigid. I'll quite honestly say that I was, I didn't like Dean. I didn't right. know how it worked. I didn't know how it ran. There was this sort of feeling that it's got to carry on as it was and right. financially we couldn't do that. I felt really the newbie and I was treading on eggshells everywhere. Uh, it was a very horrible, horrible time. But you learn yep. and everybody's very helpful. Uh, and of course, my love for Dean is, is unquantifiable now. We have had a lot to do here at Dean in the last nine years. We had to re-roof most of the house. We had to put Wait, in central... We re-roofed, no. yes, but we did, I think, a, a half of the house. And a point I always loved saying when we do that, um, the scaffolding took six weeks to put up. The scaffolding put six, six weeks? We couldn't get a lorry close enough, so we had to walk it through. And also roses at the front, the flowers at the front. Uh, roses do not like iron, do not like scaffolding. And therefore we had to be very careful that if we damage those roses, uh, it would knock the regeneration of those roses out for, for uh, well, a good 10, 15 years. Yeah, a good years. 10 years, yeah. yeah. The scaffolding went twice the height of this house. Can I rewind slightly yes, on yes. it? Because most people put a roof on first and then they deal with the central heating. Right. We did it actually the other way round. We had a lovely, lovely expert who came to look at our books, our wonderful library books, uh, and sure enough, there was white mould on them. So we had to get specialists in to come and unmould the books, in, particularly in the, in the Bowroom Library. And at the end of it, they said, that's perfect, but you do realise that after another cold winter, the mould will be back and, and, you, and you'll see us again next year. Oh so goodness. we then realised we had to sort out the, the heating and we've put in a, a, a mammoth wood chip boiler, a mammoth one, which is incredibly noisy and I love it in January, but not in June. Yes. And um, so we put in the central heating in first and then and we then, moved onto the roof. And then you moved onto the roof. But those are two big projects because... You know, at Mapperton, luckily, my in-laws had done the roof. And that, I mean, that is, I don't think that, I know I didn't realize this until I had moved into a historic house. You don't have a house without the roof. And the big, your biggest expense is the roof. And that is, so that was your huge, pro, I mean, one of two huge projects. Because then heating Dean Park and getting that biomass boiler in would have been an enormous expense. It was. <laughs> yeah, and it was, yes. We are caretakers of the house, so everything that is done on the estate within the house is all for the good of the house. Of it's course. so that we can hand it over to the next generations so that, the, so that history continues. So that history continues, that's mm. exactly right. Well, I'm excited to get stuck in today and to see more of the estate, but gosh, I really did sleep 
fantastic. I texted my husband first thing this morning. I was like, I think we need to get some a few more horsehair mattresses mm. at Maverick because I still so I don't know well. if you can. you still get them? I don't know if you can. Oh, well, there's still horses around, so oh, you must be able, able to. Sure. <laughs> After a glorious breakfast, I'm heading out with Mark Coombs, the estate manager of the Broodnell Estates, who is masterminding plans for the future here at Dean Park. So Mark, we're heading off on the estate, but I have just noticed, obviously, big wedding yep. happening here. Yep. Um, there's so much going on. We have to diversify the business in order to generate enough cash to really keep the estate going. Yes. You know, put yep. lead on the roof, as we say. Yes. And yes. to be able to reinvest back into the estate. So one of our diversifications is, is weddings. Right. And we've actually got three sites that we do weddings. Estates are, are, are far more than simply agriculture and forestry. Yep. You have land, yes. and that is an asset. And, and that asset has to be used wisely, both for, I guess, the continuing running of these estates, but as importantly, there's also a, a responsibility in, in terms of good quality stewardship and management for the wider community yes. and other stakeholders. This lovely long grass. That's right. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's so beautiful. So this is all part of a, a parkland restoration scheme. Okay. So we've stopped putting fertiliser on here about two years ago. Fantastic. Anything like that. And you can see the, well, okay. the butterflies, all the, all the biodiversity and vertebrate life is really, is really kicked in. It's beautiful. Yes. Um, oh. Yeah, we're, we're really, so this will get bailed off uh, at some point in August. Right, And then we'll right. actually have a music festival on here. Oh, so you we, are. You're, so we can do you, both. Yeah, you, you can, can kind do of both. Zone it. Exactly right. right. Yeah. It's brilliant. Okay, so where am I standing? Because I right. do, I thought when we were driving, is yes. that the house there? So the house is just there, just through the trees. And you see St. Peter's Church there in the yes. village of, of, of Dean, just here. So where we are now is really in the, the sort of the core of the estate. So this is a 500-acre parkland. Okay. Um, it's all part of the Brood Brudenal Estates, of which there are 10,000 acres. Yes. Um, and there's 3,500 acres here and a further 6,500 acres just in the Welland Valley in, okay. in, in Leicestershire. Okay. So, um, yeah, so this is all part of, part, as, as you can see, this is all part of, part, of, part of our parkland. We've converted 200 acres of former arable land back into parkland. Oh, you have? Yep. Okay. A, a, and we've planted, we'll plant probably a couple of hundred parkland trees as well over, over a period of time. Right. We're now in this period where it's trying to find that balance between food production, yep. of course, yep. and of course, rewilding right. and yep. what are you using your land for and making it work for everybody. And that's tough. Yeah, it's quite it's, a balance. It's a balance. I mean, you're never, <laughs> you're, you're, you're never going to be absolutely popular with everyone. No. But I mean, it's a fool who tries <laughs> right. to do that. I, th I think what we do is we, we have a 10 year plan. So true. Yeah, we have a 10 year plan and um, that's a fairly broad plan, if you like. Right. We know where we want to be. And then that's more detailed within a three year window. So we're quite clear where we are with our sort of development targets, where we are with our internal right, businesses, right. where we want to be with our stewardship, etc. It's lovely to go out onto the estate and start seeing, uh, yeah. you know, this. It's, it, it, it is, it's, it's I mean, absolutely lovely. It is really um, lovely, you know, and, and you do start to notice all of a sudden more butterflies or yeah, moths yeah. or the invertebrate coming back. Okay. And I'd like yeah. to introduce you to, to okay. some of our cattle. We've got some native breeds okay. who help us manage all of this. Okay, and great. they're lovely, placid, beautifully calm okay, good. Uh, Every, beef short horns. Yeah, so um, <laughs> You'll be fine. many people know that I have a fear of yeah, cows. That's fine. So, <laughs> you, you couldn't meet a nicer bunch of girls. Okay. They're absolutely lovely. You heard it here first. <laughs> Before I face my fears with the herd, we stop off to see some of the building projects Mark is overseeing. Well, this is one of the sweetest cottages I've ever seen. It, it's beautiful, I mean, isn't it? It's beautiful. <clears throat> so this was so, the old Kennelman's uh, cottage. Okay. So the, the, the years ago, they would have had their own hounds here. Right. And so this was built for, for that individual. And right. behind us over there is the, that would have been where the kennel boy would have lived. Oh my And the goodness. plan here, is to, well, you can see we're restoring this. So we've yes. replaced the, the Collie Western roof. We're turning it into a three bed oh. uh, cottage. The plan is, is that we're going to have this as our, a holiday cottage. It's the first one we will have done on the estate, but it will right. support our wedding and events yes. business. Yes. And so we've got a new venue for our woodland weddings 
nearby, but we actually discovered that we had bats up in the roofs there. Right. So we've stopped. Yes. You have uh, to consulted stop. Uh, Natural England. Yes. Um, we put in mitigating bat boxes around around the place. Right. Uh, and we we're just about to start. So the windows we're making new windows which are ready now for fitting. Okay. And as soon as the windows are done and the gutters, we can drop the scaffolding, move into the building and start and renovating inside. And start inside. renovating inside. It's got, yeah. Fantastic. So, so three bedroom here. Three bedroom here. And then what are you going to do with this? So that's going to be a single bedroom. Oh, wow. And so the idea there is that you, if you have a small wedding party, yes. bride and groom can stay in the, it's called the dog house. So oh we're calling it the dog house. I don't know if that's good or bad, but. No, I'm we're sure the bride and groom are fine. They'll, they'll like that. But so that, you... that's the plan there. So again, we're doing a little uh, timber extension at the back there. And obviously I know that you do, I've seen the marquee yeah. setting that's been set up that has that backdrop of the house. Traditionally, that's what people wanted. That's what we do at Mapperton. But you're telling me that there's now another place yeah. that people can have their weddings, yes. which is more in the woodlands. Correct. Because that's becoming Correct. very popular. People Correct. want to be in nature. So we, we can give them a little bit more choice. This is our, our woodland clearing for our woodland weddings. We've done nothing here other than mow it. But through there, through the trees, we have added some, some wild flowers, etc. So the whole idea is that we've got a really light footprint in what we're doing here. Yes. The intention is that, that, that you know the marquee goes up for that for that specific event, but it's a super um, light sort of touch, and also for, from an estate point of view, we've not spent lots and lots of money no, on this. Exactly. You know, so nature's kind of done it all for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the meadows, the meadows, are absolutely beautiful. We've Should cut we some paths a... through there if you want to have a, yeah, a quick exactly. look. Yeah, exactly. But How? it's lovely. So so we only put the well flower mix in in the autumn um, last year. Okay. But that, what we'll do here, Julie, is we'll, we'll cut this off. Right. Once it's all seeded, we'll cut it and bale it and remove it and keep taking the energy out of the grass. Okay. And you'll find the wildflower mixes get stronger and stronger, stronger. and stronger. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, if you come up here in the evenings, it's absolutely full of moths and what have you. Oh. It's really, it's lovely. In fact, I come up in the evenings so and you, it's not lovely. unusual to see a deer or two here yeah. or the hare or, or that sort of thing. But you can see the paths are they're sort of rudimentary a little bit at the moment, but you get the idea of what we're trying to this trying is to do. Brilliant. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful. And you know, then again you just see butterflies all around. Well, absolutely. So you've got the creeping thistles in yes. here. You've got um, parsley, oxide daisies. Yes. There's a few poppies, there's um, there's a thing called kidney vetch down there. Absolutely brilliant for for, it, for, for the bees, for, you can see yeah. the bees, you know, buzzing around. Well, I can so, hear so them. this is interesting, isn't it? You might be able to give me a view on this slightly. So uh, our gardens say, should we be pulling these out, these thistles? No. No. Well, there's uh, the answer. I mean, <laughs> no, look I think the, look at the, if they're you absolutely full, aren't they? And it's quite full. pretty, look, isn't it? It's looking, so looking pretty. You don't pull out the thistles because yeah. look at the wildlife that's. At, well, look at the, the you know, invertebra. Yeah. That every yeah, all, bee all, I've seen so far is it's going, been on the, is, look, there is, they are is, they're absolutely full of it they're full of it and you so, know then they pollinate and go on and, and on go and on. on this is this is but we, this is what you want to look at them this is year one so right, within is, two or three years we'll have to well I can't wait to come mint. back yeah everywhere I go Mark Everybody wants to introduce me to their cattle. I know. It's somehow it's, it's, cruel, got, isn't it? it's gotten around <laughs> that I have a fear of cows. Okay. Well, these are probably the nicest bunch of cows you're going to meet. These, these are our little herd of um, traditional beef shorthorn cattle. Right. Okay. So they're a native breed. Yes. And the reason we have them here is because uh, it's it's part of the, the our agri environmental scheme. So. We wanted to reintroduce these grazers back into the estate, ah. and so we have we have a little little herd of twenty. We've had them for a couple of years, okay. Uh, and we've got a lovely bull called Poseidon, who's not here. Oh, he's, he I was, was due. Looking. He was due to come in today, and we thought that might just be too exciting for everyone. Right, right. So he's exactly. he's in tomorrow. Okay, okay. But as you can see, they come in lots of sort of different um, colours. Yes, and what have beautiful. You. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, they're really they, beautiful. They really are. So this is part of our parkland restoration. We, we've introduced a, a, a new avenue here. Uh, as you can see, some lime trees. Yes. Cleared some trees at the other end, so you get a vista all the way up through there. Yeah, beautiful. As you come in. To, to, into, to, into, into the estate. So this yes. is part of the 500 acre restoration program. What you've got in front of you, this lovely cow, that is the classic beef short on cow. Yes. And you can see, isn't she lovely and friendly? She's lo she is lovely hey? and friendly. I mean, they're all looking at me though, so <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit like. Ooh. Yeah, no, no, no. But they're, they're, they're good calves and there's some, there's some yes. lovely calves in here.
Then Mark introduces me to some renovation projects taking place across the estate. All right, Mark, I love a good kit, so <laughs> thank you for the hard hat right. and the high vis. We've got a range of, of, of disused uh, agricultural buildings here. Right. They're, they're listed, so they're, yeah. they're, they're, there are complications uh, with that. <laughs> yes, but yes they are. They're, they're, they're totally underutilized. Yep. But what we're doing is converting these to form little business units. Um, the plan originally was to do very small little workshops, but we're actually going to go for offices. For offices. Yep, so yep. We, we, we've got planning, so we're stripping the roofs off and we'll start uh, re-roofing it, etc. But there's a lot of stone work to do. But this one here was totally gone. Right. So we've stripped that off and it's been battened and, and then we'll put the Collie, the Collie Western slate back on there. Back on there. So they're scheduled to come at the beginning of, <gasps> of, of the month Brilliant. to do that. So you can see it's a, it's a, it's a classic sort of courtyard. Um, but we, we can, we're going to create roughly 19 little business units. I think. Okay. And what we're proposing to do is heat them through geothermal rods Yes. So 10 rods at 150 metres, so one and a half kilometres if you, if you like. Right. And a little plant room and that will distribute heat and hot water for oh all of the business goodness. units. So hopefully we can ride the sort of the peaks and troughs of, of energy right. costs and so on and so forth. And, and I'm just going to ask, with this roof up here, so yep. that you, you're having to literally rebuild. The joiners will come and start replacing the timbers that need to be replaced. Okay. Uh, and our guys uh, just pointing up the walls, etc., in advance of the, bit, right. of the rest of it. Now you know me. I never miss an opportunity to get involved. And I'm joining Ned Cole and Adam McCrone up on the scaffold. So here, um, where, because the building's that old, where the wall plates moved and pushed the stonework yeah it's all come loose yeah so basically what we've got to do up here on both sides is replace the lo loose stones okay so wow me and, adam, and then repoint yes and yep. then repoint right so me and adam we, we did half of last week and this week with help from brandon doing this side right which is all pointed up and ready for the roofer to replace the roof. Oh, right, right. So this side's ready. This side's ready. And then I'm what about on the other stay. side? On the other side, there's plenty of work to do. That so side. you still, <laughs> right. Okay, should we have a little look at that? Yep. Okay, wow. This is, this is your next big project. This is the project now, <laughs> this side. <laughs> so, yeah, so basically what I'll get Adam to do now is we're here, Instead of it being lime, some lime mortar, it's, it's cement. Oh my so gosh. So what we've got to do is either, well, we've got to try and get it out and then re repoint it with lime cement, right, which right. we've been using. All um, this is cement. Yes. You can't, you're not supposed to use cement because then it, well, it doesn't work well with the environment. It's not breathable. So all the moisture gets yep. caught in. Yes, trapped. Right? Yep. Trapped in. Yes. All right, so what are you and I going to do while Adam has this super fun job. He's super <laughs> so excited. Why Adam's doing that? We what we'll do, as you can see, um, already prepared. <laughs> we've took. This is where all the loose stone was. Okay. So what we've done is we oh. took took it off, and then all we're doing is, as you can see, we've put it. So this is your top course, and that's to go on next. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll just lay these stones onto the wall. Without. No, with, oh, with the lime cement. With the lime cement. Yes. <laughs> okay. So then basically what we're doing is just rebuilding it back up to this height. Okay. So when the roof has come, it's not loose. It's, it's, it's not loose. It's okay. all solid again. Okay. Do you want to start this process? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so. Because I have zero <laughs> So what clue. we've got to do, because obviously when we clean them, there's still some cement left oh on. Oh my gosh. So just chip that off. If you've got rubbish and dirt still there, your cement's not going to stick. It's not going to stick. So what you've got okay. to do from there. Oh my goodness. Again, different no. brick layers and stone layers, they, they have their own way of putting joints on. Some put it on the one they've got in yep. the hand and some put it on there. And then basically what you've got to do is fight your way back in. Oh. I mean, that's looking sort of right. Yeah. yeah. So, again, when you've done that, 
Okay, so I'm gonna to try to do one. <laughs> so I take this and I'm gonna plunk it on, yep. correct? Spread it about. I mean, Lord, yeah, I need that places one. In. Mm -hmm. And go far back, Natch. How yep. far back should I yep. go? More. More. Yep. And back. Yep. What do we think? More? No, that's fine. You sure? That's fine. That's good. Okay. And then what you've got to do there mm -hmm. is so you stone to stick, you need a joint either on this stone or that stone. Oh, right. Okay. So what I would do, I would put it on there mm -hmm. so then you can control okay. the stone with your hand. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Yep. How's that? That's fine. Okay. Now? So now what you've got to do is pick your stone up uh -huh. without any dirt on it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Keep a 10 mil gap ish uh -huh. there uh -huh. and then tap it when you're sort of level ish. Yeah. You're there. I'm there. I did it. Yeah. I did one. And then you go on to your next one. And you go on to the next one. Mm. And then you're. You just carry on. And then you just carry it and you've got all to do so, all yeah, down there. So, so there's lots to do. Lots to do. Gosh, I'm going to have to come back here and visit this. Oh, yes. That is for <laughs> sure. So you're really seeing behind the scenes here, really. This is this not is... many people, well, hardly any people get to see this. <laughs> oh um, so what we've got here, it's an yeah. extraordinary building. I think it's one of the only of its type of its, uh, in the UK. So it's a brick, <gasps> it's brick built, listed riding school. Okay, so it's mid, mid 19th century, 1840 or. Right, so, right. so it, was, it was built by the Earl of Cardigan to train his horses. Oh my so goodness. So can you imagine training your horses undercover here? And oh the my goodness. walls, if you look at the bottom of the walls, can you see that they, they slope away slightly? Yes, I do, yes. That's so the horse as it's going around in its peripheral vision can see that and just keeps you and the rider, it keeps the rider off the wall, doesn't ah. it? So you can go around here at, at quite high speed. And so of course it they, was very cleverly built, obviously. Very cleverly yeah. built, yeah. yes. And as you can see, it's, it's in need of, of restoration. Some of the timbers have rotten and we've got uh, acro props keeping it up. We got a little grant from the Historic Houses Foundation. Oh, did you? Well to done. Do it. Yep. So the idea is that we will strip all these roofs, reset all the timber, rebuild the walls where they're bowing out. Yes. Um, and then re we're going to reuse this. So the yes. idea, what our kind of vision is here, is to have markets in here at least oh. monthly. So Christmas, maybe a Christmas market, a flower fair, an antique fair. Oh my gosh! So we, so we could run electric antique around fair. the outside. Be It'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah I mean, must have a, oh my goodness. Have a, have a good explore. It's a lovely set I of buildings. This is definitely, it? I will definitely. It's unusual, be, isn't it? It's really it's unusual, unusual and it's beautiful. It is actually really beautiful. Good. I've just had a brilliant day out. I've learned so much about really the detail it takes to run an estate like Dean Park. And it, you know, it always brings me back that of course, these estates have these wonderful, magical, historical homes that w visitors want to come and see, but it's a running estate. There's old farm buildings that need to be repurposed, yet they're listed, so you have to do them the right way. This is a perfect example right here of, um, you know, an old sort of training riding school, if you like, and it is listed. So it needs to be repaired in the right way. And yes, there are grants available, but the grants only go so far. And you have to work out how you can commercially use these spaces in order to generate income that goes back into the estate. Today is the big day. It's the wedding here at Dean Park. So I put my dress back on to look the part. But I'm first gonna check out the gardens because like so many historic houses, there are usually magnificent gardens attached to them and Dean Park certainly has some sensational gardens to look at. Right, now you're, you are known for your gardens, aren't you? We are, yeah, yeah. yes. And we have, we have in the last nine years uh, produced a few more gardens. This is the golden garden because they all flowers later in the year. So when the long borders are over, yes. you can then actually <gasps> have colour. We've grown sort of local things. We haven't had a designer in. We're just growing things that we know are going to 
work and survive here. Beautiful, but this is one of how many? Uh, well, five different coloured theme gardens that Love we've it. got. All right, where are we off to next? Right, on we go. Beautiful. Well, this is lovely. I mean, do you come out here as often? Every day. Every day, Every exactly, day with the dog. As you should do. We're going now into the White Garden. Okay. And um, the White Garden was built in, it was there before, but we revamped the entrance. Right. And it's done in memory of Robert's parents. <gasps> so everything here is white. Oh my goodness. And there's goodness. a little urn tucked in there given by the guides. <gasps> and then Robert's father's got one there given by his tenants. It's so lovely. In fond memory of Edmund Brudenell, given by the farm tenants, August 25th. It's lovely. And then the other one is for mother. Mother-in-law, Marion, mother, yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Everything here is white, except at the end so of April, beautiful. when we have forget-me-nots galore. Right. And they were yeah. white forget-me-nots, but they've turned back to being blue. Blue, right. And right. I did say to Andrew, hang on a minute, it's a white garden. <laughs> and his answer was, well, being called forget-me-nots, it's the right name. Yeah. This is beautiful. This is like an avenue of heaven, right? It's called the Long Borders, and originally it was part of the um, walled garden that was built in about 1720. The gardens here at Dean were, obviously during the Second World War, they were all put to grass. Okay. And Robert's parents started to formulise the garden back as it was. And these wonderful borders here were half the size, and they took advice and they doubled them in size, which is why they're so luscious and rich right, and yes. full of colour. And... But everything we do here as a garden is that it's an adjunct to the house. It's not a separate garden that's, you know, beautifully designed. Right. And all it grows with the house. So everything that we have here, and we do only have two gardeners, is self-seeding. And they go along and weed, obviously, they, yes, they, they keep yes. it going and replant. How wonderful. It's absolutely beautiful. This is enormous. It is enormous, and we change all the flowers within it. And the flowers that we're planting now seem to be changing much more into sort of warmer, hotter plants. Ten years ago, I knew you'd never have put a banana plant out there, but now it thrives. <laughs> it certainly does. So where we are now is called what garden? It's called the Four Seasons Garden. Okay. I think this was here originally, but it wasn't planted out with, with these, this wonderful beech hedge that we have. Mm. Um, and the colouring in here is a sort of mixture of white and, and blue and yeah. red. So it's rather, yeah. rather a royal garden, actually, yeah, it isn't it? Yeah, it is a royal garden. Yes. It's fantastic. <laughs> And this would have been a huge kitchen garden. Is that right? We've got records in the 1850s where they had 18 gardens just in the vegetable gardens. Fantastic. I just want to show you this building here. It was built by um, the 7th Earl of Cardigan and it's where he entertained his lady friends. Yes, oh there's, a, there's some stairs at the back that go what? up to what was his bedroom. Yes. Oh but. my, so he built that as his escape. There's his little yes. hideaway. Yes. There you go. Right. Oh, oh and now we're going to head up okay. here. Okay. Let's head up here. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm standing on where people will get married. This is your third location. This is the very first of the three oh, locations. The first, okay, right. Yes. So this location came first, and you decided to put this in, people can get married here. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Weather dependent. Yes. 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 Yeah, of course. Yes. And then what? Chairs would come out here. Chairs would be put out there and then they go straight straight into the marquee behind. But to have three wedding venues is incredible on an estate. And they're all different and that's what's so wonderful. You've got the lakes and then this one you called... The this, wall garden. The walled garden. The marquee. Yes. Marquee. The lakes and then the woodland. And, and this tradition has been the most popular and, and we're sold out here for next year. Because of licenses, we can only hold a certain amount. So right. 2023 booked. So originally, though, this would have been, again, part of the walled garden. The, the, thir the third Earl of Cardigan, when he came back to Dean eventually, uh, discovered that fruit and vegetables had to be bought in from the neighbouring estate at Blatherwick. And he was so shamed by that, he started at a brick kiln and they built these seven oh, walled gardens. No. And it's just incredible oh that... Goodness. They're still oh standing, goodness. these walls, which are all listed. And then, and then at some stage they were used for growing Christmas trees and breeding pheasants. And I believe there was a tennis court here once upon a time. Well, it's brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. Come on, Minta. This is, this is. Come on, Minta. Come on, Minta. Each generation 
adapts the gardens to the tastes and needs of their time. Robert has joined us to explore the jewel in the crown here at Dean Park. Well, this is glory right here. <laughs> Tell me about this it. This is the main best bit showing off of Dean Park Gardens. This is called the parterre that uh, Robert's parents put in in the 1980s. And they got David Hicks to design it. And it's based on the Serlio design, which we have throughout the house, of a square and a circle and a square. Right. Uh, and the whole theme of this garden is purple. Now, Charlotte, I want to just point out something a little bit further <laughs> oh, along. Like something to do with lozenges, <laughs> I'm guessing. It's just something as I was staying here that, and I was walking around and I was like, <gasps> I spotted that <laughs> coat of arms all on its own. That is the Montague one because yeah. there's nothing brutal added exactly. to it. I know. Yeah, so that was done in honor of, of Mary. Mary, yeah. Montague. There we go. Incredible. Yeah, I know. So, I, like I said, we're family. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed. Wow, well, that was a real treat. And I can see now, well, you know, it's all these layers that Dean Park has. You know, you've got the history of the house, but it's then you've got the living history, your own stories, but attached to that and part of the fabric really of the building are these extraordinary gardens. And then you've got the wider estate. It's wonderful though, wonderful. I've got one more garden to show you. Yes. Round the corner, which is a rather special. Oh, okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. Yes. let's go to that. Let's go to that. This is the east front of the house, which I think architecturally is the most interesting side yeah. of the house. This is Mrs. Robert's pink rose garden which I have put in as, as, as my gift to Dean, my legacy oh. to Dean. And it's pink because, because there are too many men in our house <laughs> and I love pink. Uh, and it was designed particularly because originally, once upon a time, there was a chapel that stuck out. That was the monastic chapel, the medieval chapel that you saw the arch coming through yes. to. And to the right of it was a knot garden of herb, a herb garden in the shape of a cross. Okay. So that's what we've done here is the shape of a cross. Oh, you've done, yes. And what we did here was we've put pink lavender. You put pink lavender. And the colours of the roses grayed out from dark pink to mm. pale pink. And they're all chosen because they're named after people we love. Oh, they are. So Rosamundi for Godmother Rosie. Right. Sophie Splendida for Godmother Sophie. And Fantastic. this, as you can see, is a haven of bees and butterflies. Yeah, I can see them. Yeah. Obviously, I see a lot of coat of arms here. It's, it's um, the carvings are beautiful. Lots of broodnels, shamrocks, which is the tresham. Right. Tresh for yeah. three. Yeah. So this side is pre pre Montague, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is wonderful. And I love that we've sort of done this fantastic garden tour, but we've ended with you. Oh. We've ended with your I'm clashing garden. terribly with you. No, no, it's pink great. Roses. I love it. You stand out, Charlotte. You stand out. So these historic houses rely on, of course, visitor income, the tours, the events, but weddings are a huge part of income for these historic houses in order for them to restore, to repair, and to preserve this part of England's heritage. And Dean Park is no different. I'm really excited. The marquee's right here. I'm gonna get stuck in and see all that goes on in preparing for this huge wedding that's happening here tomorrow. All right, this is the big marquee right here. I'm about to meet Georgina, wedding coordinator here. So they're getting prepped for this enormous wedding. It's all very exciting. This is a fantastic marquee, by the way. Whoa, and it's huge. Hello. Hi, lovely to meet you. So nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you Welcome. so much for letting, this is enormous. It's huge, isn't it? I can come in and see what's happening. But I'm sorry. That's right, don't be sorry. <laughs> I'm all about kidding out and making sure that this floor <laughs> stays, stays squeaky clean there we go. until tomorrow. Come in. Great. So this is an enormous marquee. Isn't Huge. It? This is the biggest we've had at Dean Park so far. We are one a week at the very most. Right. So we can give our couples the full week's yes. attention for the build-up, as you yes. can see, that's taking yes. place oh here. Oh my goodness. Because I know weddings are a big business. It is. For historic houses. I mean, we have a wedding business as well, and it's big for us, and it's 
It's because it's a way to generate income that can yes. then go back into Absolutely. preserving the estates. We keep right, it very right. exclusive so we can give our couples the time that yes. they deserve in the planning yes. of their weddings and the setup. But with the other two sites now coming along, we'll be able to take a few more weddings on because the Woodland site is so far away. Yeah. It's, a, it's a self contained venue in its own right. Yes, so yes. Um, we'll be we'll growing, there. isn't it? Yeah, magical. Do you see the wildflowers? Oh, yeah, it was so oh. pretty. So we saw, Mar I was with Mark, we saw so many bees on the thistles and it was it was incredible and butterflies tomorrow yep. um the dj will be setting up we've got a big screen going behind the dance floor right. with the dj booth and all the lights on the stage here in the front so it will change right. a bit tomorrow um crystal group are in at the moment setting up all the decor so they're okay. setting up all the the vip tables in the middle here and ah, all the so centerpieces okay so these these are the family tables, tables. right and then this is all this all the guests. Now these yes. centerpieces are rather extraordinary. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. We're final touches today. So this is Daisy from Fuse Marquis. Hello. hello. <laughs> She's steaming the um, the all the drapes today to take right. all the creases out. So you've got to go all the way around. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. I know what it is. Can I just have a little go? It's quite yeah, fun, of isn't course. it? It's quite fun, <laughs> isn't it? But ha look at that. There's something about a steamer. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It just sort of makes you proud because you're like, oh my gosh. But you, how's your arm going to be after this? All right, to be honest. Will I'm it be? Well, I'm well you're, practiced. you're well practiced and steaming. I mean, it does take some time. I mean, you know, this is. So, have you just started here? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> okay. Daisy has a long way to go. <laughs> this. You can do this yes. occasionally, right? Give yourself a nice little yeah. facial there. The next step, so tablecloths have gone on, centerpieces will go in place, then they'll dress the um, VIP tables in the right, middle. Right. Then that's the decor team done. I make that yeah. sound really quick and easy. No, no, they'll no, be no, here no, all day. Okay. So with the preparations for the wedding well underway, it's time to head inside to help get ready for our dinner party this evening. All right, I have to be honest, Lynn, that I have been waiting all day for this. You know, when I've gone to dinner parties before, I've always been impressed with the napkins. I've tried it many, many times myself, mm -hmm. and I haven't been able to do it. So I've been right. told to come and find you because you know what to do. That is the napkin ring. I'll show you okay. how to make. Yes. How do you start? So you've right. got the napkin so here. So you get the napkin. Let's make it with starch. Yeah. And then iron it all out. Fold it in half. Right. Spray it again. Okay. You fold that here there and iron it. Yeah. And then another one. Another one. Iron. Iron. Flip oh, it over. So two, two. Flip over. Flip it over again. Okay. And then Double you fold. just roll. Okay, you made that way too easy. So it's like a fold in half, yeah. and then two little folds, yeah. and then a fold in half, and a roll. Yeah. Okay. All right, should I have a little go? I think you should. Like that. So I'm just going to start on like a clean slate here. Okay, now. Fold in half. Fold in half. Spray again, Spray yeah. again. Okay. Okay. One fold. And iron. Just iron, yeah. Just iron. Okay. And then another one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then I do that. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna flip it over. Yeah. Okay. So should I go? Yeah. Like that? Whoops, whoops. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fold up here. Then I'm gonna roll. And then I roll up. Okay, roll. And there you have your napkin ring. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Lynn is kindly doing a Birds of Paradise napkin just for me in my honor. All right, here we go. Iron it all Iron. up. And you fold it in half. Okay. Spray. And you fold it into a square. Okay. You fold each ah. thing up. And then you iron. Iron. Spray. Yeah. Iron. Then you fold and iron. Okay. Then you fold that over and then you just do that. Right. 
and then you take <gasps> each little oh my gosh and now i see why you had to starch them yeah in yeah in in between each of the folding yeah crease <gasps> that is beautiful okay i love that one that was brilliant so exciting um that i was able to do that and i can definitely take that yeah back home i'm going to remember that fold in half fold 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 in half yeah roll yeah, yeah. and that's nice at christmas as well because you can put a little bit of ivy yeah or yeah, holly or holly in, yeah, there. in there or even mistletoe if yeah. you have some yeah. yeah thank you lynn next up polishing the silver so can I lend a hand? That would be marvellous. One of the things I do like to do is polish silver. So would you okay. like to polish one of these? This must be Bruno family silver here. I believe that's yeah. a wedding present, Mrs. Bruno? Yeah. 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 Beautiful. And there's, a, there's a pair, you see. Oh, yes. Are these just really more like features? Yes. Just features cock, on the, the top. The pheasant sits up by Mr. Bruno and, yep. and, the, and the female by Mrs. Bruno. Right. I think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm polishing this. Maybe you should wear one. Maybe of these, I should. Yeah. I was just thinking. I don't know if I'm. Get your yeah. I, well, I just. It. I kind of want to. <laughs> you know, I'm all about ki being kitted out. There's something quite meditative about this. Yes, like, there is. Yeah, it's part of our deep cleaning regime as well. It probably takes us a good you know, week to um, polish all the silver over. in the house. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. how often do you, are you polishing? Just once a year. Just yeah. once a year. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah mm, that's mm, about mm. what we do as well. Yeah. What do you guys think? Oh, I think you've done a marvelous job. Yeah, great job. Is that all right? Mm. Okay. I mean, you can you can definitely tell a difference of the shine. All right, ladies, are we finished? It's rather fun, isn't it? Then the big test for me, setting the table. Anytime I do get left to set the table without my husband, he does come around and check it. In fact, we just had a son's 21st birthday and I set the table for that. But it all looks so beautiful when it's said and done. So I'm going around and I'm just making sure there's sort of one thumb distance um, so that when you sort of look down here, and this is how I always, when I do mark it, when I look down at the one end of the table all the way down, I want to see like a perfect line. I think there's one I might have to move up here just like a tiny bit that's bothering me. The thing about formalities is that if we don't keep them up, they will get lost. And it's not that we're doing this all of the time, um, but it's about carrying on these traditions. And times, of course, have changed, and luckily they have, and many of us just have lovely suppers in our kitchen. But I think, you know, every once in a while, being able to set the table properly, I think it's a real art and I think it's a thing of beauty and I think it's wonderful it's just to be able to be in such a beautiful setting around you know, friends or new acquaintances and having a really proper dinner party. So it's my last night here at Dean Park and we've set up for a dinner party. The dinner is in the dining room. I cannot wait to eat in there, but it's just been an extraordinary time here at Dean Park. And this is the wonderful thing about these historic houses. Yes, they're open to the public and we love opening them to the public, uh, having visitors come in and tour all the rooms. But of course, they also need to be lived in. This is really living history. So I'm really excited to be able to dine with Charlotte and Robert and have a dinner party in the dining room and use the rooms uh, occasionally and put new energy and life in them. So I feel like I'm going off to a ball. I'm not, but I feel like I am because let's face it, I'm in a castle and I have a turret there for my bathroom.
something about drawing rooms like no other rooms in the world. This, oh my goodness! They're really called withdrawing rooms and they're where the ladies withdrew to when men were carrying on drinking port round the table. And having cigars. So that's why they're always, <laughs> so, <laughs> they're always so exquisitely beautiful. So tell me about this drawing room. Well, this drawing room, originally it had silk hangings and we've got a small remnant left in the corner over there. Right. And then Robert's parents found this exquisite American wallpaper. <gasps> no. It's not silk, it's wallpaper. And they put the filaments over it so it looks like it's silk. This room being a withdrawing room has got portraits really mostly of women. We've got Anna Maria, and then we have Mary, Mary Tresham, Mary Brudnell, the first Countess of Cardigan, my absolute fave rave. She yes. was the one who held the fort during the Civil War when everything was taken, the books, the pictures, the furniture, Every, yep. and everybody skedaddled and she was left here being fined four-fifths of her income. Oh my goodness. Do you feel that she kind of saved the place? She really kept the home fires burning. I love that you said that this is where, you know, the drawing room is because this is where the women used to withdraw. But you have really made it, you know, women, sort of empowering women around here. Well, I'd love to say I made it, but in fact, it was Robert's mother who made it. What is the most beautiful thing in the room are these portraits we've got, which are painted by Paul Van Soma. And right. they're known as the Brudenal Tresham portraits. There's nothing to do with the Tresham. I think they're all sisters. So you want to find out who they are. Of course and so this I is do. another project it's, at Dean. It is my exploration right. phase, yes. yes. It's one big research project, isn't it? And it's such fun because, you know, interior decorating changes the whole time. Research becomes more and more easy to do. I've yes. just looked up something and found that there's a book I can read online for what right. I want the information for. And, and so as, as information progresses, we learn more and sometimes things change. Yes. And what you think is written in ink is, is uh, yes, not the person you thought they were. Right, and you have to change the narrative and the storytelling. Yes. But, um, and that's what's so fascinating. I mean, it is utterly beautiful. It's, it's an elegant room, isn't it, it? it? It really is. And here is our good health to you for coming all the way from beautiful, beautiful Dorset. No, you are to, a Dorset up to, <laughs> up to Northamptonshire, which we absolutely now love. Yep. Um, and thank you for taking the time to come no, and see us. No, thank you. This has been... And to understand and to share our joy of Dean. I love, I mean, I'm, I'm in love. I'm in love with Dean, okay? Let's just say that. Good. And um, it's brilliant. So thank you both and um, cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin. <laughs> and so Robert, Charlotte and I reflected on my visit over dinner and raised our glasses once more. Thank you both well, so much. It is so much our pleasure to have you. You lighten up our life and we well, just think it's fabulous that, that you appreciate Dean, which we so appreciate. Yeah. I appreciated on it. I appreciated it before because I am, you know, a lover, if you like, of historic houses. But I appreciate it now more than ever because coming here, you get to really see how it all works together. And it is, in one sense, a big jigsaw puzzle. But you have the team in place, and the team so looks up to you. And you have the two of you who just immerse yourself into making sure that the pieces are in the right place and that this carries on for Well, I'd the just future. like to make tribute now to the fact of our three wonderful trustees. Yeah. Because they let us go out on, on, on little adventures and, and yeah. there are, they are so supportive. It's amazing. And um, thank you, we could not survive without yeah. them. So I would like to pay tribute to them. Yeah, you, and you must, because trustees are so important, especially in this, in where, in where we are today with historic houses. So. Cheers, and I can Indeed. cheers. Thank Chin. you for a really, truly spectacular time. And the following day, before I head home, there's time to take a peek at the wedding celebrations. It's so exciting. The bride and the groom have just arrived and they're here to do some of their photos, of course, with Dean Park as their backdrop. So far, so good with the weather, and I got a sneak peek of her, and she's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm.